took my main scripture from Hebrews, um, chapter 11, verse 6, primarily, which says, without faith, it's impossible to, um, to please God. And I'm going to expound further on, on how to tie it in with this topic, this question. The Christian life is obviously rooted in the word faith, and without it, our Christianity will be meaningless. And we've seen in Hebrews 11 how faith is defined in great detail, and we can read about the heroes of faith that set the example for us and essentially challenge us to take the same leap as they did. And it goes, by faith, Abraham, you find by faith, Isaac, by faith, Moses, by faith, it can be you, by faith, it can be me also. As young people, we have ample opportunities to see, do seemingly impossible things because we're strong and capable. It is now a time to set our limits to God's scope and prove him at his word, as our forefathers or the forerunners did. This often means we have to be brave, fearless, and be sometimes willing to stand out of the crowd. There are many examples in the Holy Bible where young people did great things for God, and it wasn't because they were told to by adults, but because they had absolute faith. When I looked up absolute in the dictionary, it defined it as complete, perfect, pure, unlimited. Do you have absolute faith? You cannot describe faith and use the word limits in the same sentence because it would be senseless. What if God was to talk to you face to face right now? Would you have the guts to tell him, oh, I know you have the power to do anything, but you can't use me because I have some sort of inadequacy. Moses tried that and it didn't work. And often we pose excuses to God all the time and not realizing we can most likely make him angry. Um, we all know the story of David and he certainly had a God-sized faith. He killed a lion, a bear, and Goliath. Why was he able to boldly face such dangers fiercely? The odds were staggering against him in all instances. He was young, he was untrained, unskilled. He lacked war experiences, but he went to face a giant. Sometimes we hear this story so many times, we may, we may view it like a wonderful fairy tale. We clap our hands at the right time, get excited at the right moment, but we don't take the time to think deeply about it. You have to think deeply. If you, a little boy, going against a seasoned warrior like Goliath, can you see yourself there facing Goliath? What gave David the courage to face the dangers when even grown men who were fighters, who were trained, doing this all their life were afraid? The answer I realized, what gave David the courage was in 1 Samuel 17, verse 36. It said, Goliath had defied the armies of the living God. David knew that God's name was not to be blasphemed among the heathen, so he stood out to defend it. What are we doing to defend God's name? Miriam is another example of God using a young person to orchestrate his, his will. During the time of great oppression by, the, um, by Pharaoh the Egyptians, she was willing to stick her neck out, placing herself in a position for God to use her. And in Exodus 2, we see Miriam standing afar off to see what will become of her three-month-old baby brother as he floated in a basket among the bulrushes. What if she had allowed herself to fear the consequences of being caught? Even when Pharaoh's daughter noticed the baby, she could have thought all was lost. How could she have possibly known that the princess would react in a positive manner? What would you have done? Consider the consequences of inaction. If Miriam wasn't there, who would have, uh, had, who would have the princess have found to nurse Moses? She would have found somebody else. And if David hadn't stepped up to Goliath's challenge, what would have become of the armies of God? Do you think God would have conjured up a bag of tricks to fix the problem there? No, we would have to come up with another plan after his first one decided not to be used. Um, in Esther, Mordecai told his, um, I believe, cousin Esther, chapter 4, verse 13, If thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlarge enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Mordecai reminded Esther if she didn't do what the task that God had placed her to do, God would have had to come up with a second plan. And in the place, by her not doing it, she would have ended up being destroyed. So should God have to come up with another plan because of you? Often the greatest part barrier to young people doing anything for God is fear. Fear of standing out of the crowd, of being laughed at, of censure, of looking stupid in the eyes of others. But what does God have to say about fear? His book is filled with um, scriptures on how we should not fear. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 21 says, Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it. As the Lord God of thy father has said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
Isaiah 44 verse says, eight says, fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any. Isaiah 51, seven says, hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of revilings. Matthew 10, 31, fear ye not therefore, you are more valued than many sparrows. Hebrews 13, six, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So what can we do for God as young people? Are we in the position for God to use us for our standing result, or are we just gonna sit there never testing our faith? We all know that the book of Acts is an unfinished book. The Acts of the church are still being recorded. What will be recorded about you there? Would you, we would even find your name? We are in God's first plan right now. He wants to do wonderful things through us, and it's time to stop hiding in our little corners, sitting on our little talents, being nonchalant. So take that deep breath and take the big swallow if you need to, and step in faith. God bless you.